Techno Fate channel. Checking in. On today's episode of Dad's Gadgets, we're going to be interviewing Jim to give us his thoughts, his opinions on the Kona Hyundai Ultimate Electric Vehicle. We're going to try to go through some of the big major questions people have before buying an electric vehicle to hopefully answer the ones that you might have. First and foremost, Jim, tell us a bit about the car. Um, it's 100% electric. Uh, not a hybrid. Um, it gets about uh, 250 to 260 average uh, range. Um, it, uh, it it runs at about five cents a mile, as opposed to a gas car, which is closer to 13 to 14 cents a mile. So it's cheaper to operate. It's more expensive to buy, though. Uh, this particular model costs about 45,000 brand new. If it's a 21. Uh, the 22s are out, uh, and they eliminated uh, one of the models, and they just have two models now, but they did lower the price of the upper-end model. This is the upper-end model of the 21s. It comes co so complete with GPS. It has uh, cruise control, adaptive cruise control with stop and go. Uh, you can drive through a traffic jam without hitting the brake or gas pedal. Uh, there is virtually no learning curve. It drives just like a regular gas car. Uh, the difference is... Uh, you get your best mileage with a gas car on the highway at uh, faster speeds, and stop and go is a gas car's worst enemy, while this car, stop and go, you get the best mileage from it because of uh, the regenerative braking and the, uh, uh, the fact that higher speeds causes more wind resistance, which causes you to use more energy when you're running the car. Uh, depending on the weather, batteries do better in warm weather than they do in cold weather. If, uh, you know, if it's a dead of winter, below freezing, on a 100% charge, I'll get about 240 mile total range. Uh, in the summertime, uh, when the war weather warms up, this will get closer to 280 to 290. Almost all of our charging is done at home, and it's on a level 2 charger. If, uh, if I plug it in, at night, say, you know, around 10 o'clock, it's on a schedule, it's going to start charging so that it'll be ready to go when we're ready to go. And so our set leave time is like 8, 8.30, and it'll be fully charged by then. Uh, from 50% to 100%, it's probably going to take about four and a half hours, five hours. But we're sleeping while it's charging. When I first got this vehicle, actually, the um, I first we first got an electric vehicle it was a Kona uh, back in 2019, and we leased it. The idea being that the technology is advancing so rapidly that at the end of three years, you're about ready to trade it in and swap out for a newer vehicle. Um, and we also, when we traded that vehicle in and got this one, this is one is also a lease. However, I'm beginning to rethink that. And I'm thinking, uh, I've been told that the trade-in values of these cars is much higher than expected. And I'm thinking probably I will purchase the next vehicle because actually we do more miles than you might think. At 10,000 miles a year, we got 8,500 on it already and we've only had it for six months. And so probably we're going to be going over our mileage limit. But uh, yeah, when this gets traded in, we're going for another electric. Maintenance, at 15,000 miles we will uh, rotate the tires. There's no oil to change. There's no transmission, so therefore no transmission fluid. Uh, there's no uh, coolant system. There's no muffler. I, there's just nothing to maintain on it. Basically, it's an electric motor and four wheels. Driving. With regenerative driving, uh, it's, if you, it, you can pick the level of regeneration you want. I picked the highest one. It's called one pedal driving. You let up on the gas pedal, the car slows down. You don't need the brakes. Uh, it has a, uh, another paddle which increases the regeneration to bring you to a complete stop. You still use the brakes in an emergency stop. It, the regeneration won't bring you to a complete stop very fast. But overall, I would say we use the brakes maybe 10% that you would in a gas car. Well, when we got this car, there weren't that many available. Uh, there was the Chevy Bolt. Uh, the Kona electric, and that was pretty much your only. Well, there was the uh, the Le the Leaf, the Nissan Leaf, um, but we wanted a fully electric, and this was available at the dealership. We went to test drive it at, and uh, we watched several YouTube videos comparing the two 
the Bolt and the Kona, and the Kona seemed to get more points, so we chose this one. And you're happy with it? You're happy with your decision? I'm very happy with it. There are a couple drawbacks that I'll go over with you, um, but overall, it's been the perfect car. We have 8,500 miles on it. It's been trouble-free. Um, it's quiet. It's quick. It's fast. Uh, zero to 60 in six seconds. Well, I think some of the common negatives that people consider uh, with an electric car is, first of all, your range anxiety. Can you get to a, a charger on the road uh, before you run out of electricity? We've never had an issue with that. It's a little different way of thinking. When you drive an electric car, you there are several apps you can download on your phone. You can go online on your computer. You can scope out several charging stations along your route. You pick one uh, where you might have a good reason to stop. You, if you've been driving for two, two and a half hours. You're ready to stretch your legs. You get out, you plug in, you go have a cup of coffee. When you come back, your car's charged. On a fast charger, uh, on a public charger, this one will go from 10% to 80% in about 45 minutes. Uh, with us, that works just fine because that's just about enough time you know, to plug in, go to Starbucks, sit, have a nice leisurely coffee, and when you come back, you're just about done. Uh, there is an initial investment if you've never owned an electric car before. You have to uh, consider the cost of installing an electrical outlet uh, suitable for the uh, 220 volt charger that you're going to be using. Uh, in my case, I had to have our whole service replaced because it was aging and it wasn't quite enough to handle what I needed. But uh, so that initial cost was about 850 to to $1,000, you know, for the electrician and so forth. The charger itself, uh, it's a portable charger. We got it for about 250 bucks on Amazon. So the initial investment uh, is is considerable as 1200 to 1300 in addition to the cost of the vehicle. This vehicle, brand new, costs about 45000 Its gas counterpart, Kona, is about 25000 So there's a significant difference there. Uh, on the other hand, maintenance-wise and operational-wise, it's much cheaper to operate. Like I say, $0.05 cents a mile compared to the 12 to $0.13 cents a mile uh, on a gas car. So it does have some ups and downs. You also have a government incentive program. Uh, they applied the $7,500 federal government credit toward the lease, which brought our payments way down. Another negative uh, part about the car that a lot of people have doubts about is the time it takes to charge. Well, if in a fast charger on the road, a level three charger, like I say, takes about 45 minutes to charge this car from 10 to 20% up to 80, 85%. Uh, that's quite a bit of time and you have to kind of plan your stops so that you might have something else to do like grab a bite to eat or whatever. A gas station stop is five minutes, but that's on the road. And how often are you doing a long road trip? Ultimately, 99% of our driving is done at home or near home and we charge at night in our garage. Picks up like this uh, and you have more storage underneath. This little thing pops out here if you don't want it. I usually don't use this because it's pretty shallow. And now you can see where there's more storage underneath. There's the uh, portable charger that comes with the car. That's a level one charger. That's what takes the longest uh, from 10 to 80 percent. I would say it takes about two and a half days <laughs> on the level one charger. So almost no one ever uses that. Okay. Uh, one of the negative parts of the car that I don't particularly like is the back seat leg room. And I would demonstrate to show you what it's like to get in there, but I can't. Okay, I'm six foot two and my legs just don't fit back there. A small person can, but not very comfortably for very long. If you have a short driver and he pulls the seat up, then you're going to have more leg space. But uh, when you compare it to other electric vehicles like the Mach-E or the Ionic 5, um, this has less than half of that legroom in those other cars. This is a NEMA 1450 plug. It is the standard plug that comes with many um, portable chargers. This is a must start. It's a very popular charger. I got it off of Amazon for about $250. It has a couple of adapters. This one has the NEMA 1450 plug attached. And you just, when you're ready to charge your vehicle, you just plug it in. The display shows uh, when you start charging, 
the rate of charge per kilowatt hour and the number of amps it's using. And it will also show you the total kilowatt hours that it used charging the vehicle at the end. Um, here are the other two adapters that I have. This one might be of interest to people. It's perfectly legal to plug in to your dryer outlet. And this is your typical dryer plug. And that's a perfectly legal adapter that you can buy extra with this charger. The level one charger, uh, which plugs into your regular 110 outlet, is this adapter. And it's the exact same adapter that comes with the car. So uh, I've never used it. It's too slow. But once you've plugged it in, you're ready to go. There's the plug that goes into the car. And right now it's got the cover on it. That's what it looks like. And we'll bring it out to the car and I'll show you how the charge is done. It comes with a 20 foot cord, so it's a very generous length. Uh, and I can reach the charging port of this car when the car is in the garage. Now here's the charge port door. You just push it, pull it out. It's got a cover. Take the cap off, and there's a receptacle. Now I'm going to plug it in. Now this thing is on a, if I want to start charging immediately, I'm going to press this override button. Now you can see the flashing light means it's in, it's charging now. And if I just left it plugged in, it's about half charge right now. It would probably be fully charged in about three or four hours. And but, you set this up to charge specifically at night, right? Right. Over time. That's why I had to push the override button because anytime during the day when I plug it in, it will acknowledge the connection and then it will shut down and it won't start charging again until it reaches the calculated time that it would take from start of charge to end of charge. In my case, I set the time for 8.30 in the morning, so it's done charging by then. Now, another plus to this, even when it's in the garage with the door closed, obviously there's no emissions involved here, uh, so it's perfectly safe. But uh, the, the plus is about 15 minutes before we leave the house in cold weather, I can, through an app on my phone, get it to start conditioning, and it will heat up to 75 degrees in the interior compartment being nice and toasty warm when we get in. Then I don't have to pull it out to start it or anything. Now, another thing I'd like to show you, so I can disconnect this just by pulling the switch like this and then pulling it out because I just wanted to show you the other cap here. This is what you have to do if you want to do the fast charge on the road, the level three charge. The plug that comes with it takes both of these receptacles. A little different than your typical gas engine compartment. Um, just a couple of things I want to point out. The, the electric motor is under here. Uh, this is the coolant for the battery. Batteries do get hot when they're running, so they, to lower the stress on them, uh, there is a coolant that runs through it. This is the brake fluid, and that's the windshield wash, and that's it for fluid. There's no oil, transmission fluid, radiator fluid, or anything like that. It must be a lighter car without, without a lot of that. Is it, is it it's a... actually a heavier car because oh, of the battery. because of the battery, duh. Yeah, okay. the battery's very heavy. I would say this car weighs about 1,000 pounds more than its gas counterpart. Okay. Uh, one of the things that uh, gives it better mileage is the lack of heat production. In a gas car, 80% of your energy from the gas is waste heat. And so 20% is basically used for propulsion. These cars are closer to 95% efficient. Now, if a gas car were 95% efficient, it would be much cheaper to drive than an electric car. But uh, it's actually, uh, when I say five cents per mile to operate, our rates are 22 and a half cents per kilowatt hour. I believe in Massachusetts is even higher. Some states like Georgia, Alabama, uh, Arkansas, they're closer to five cents per kilowatt hour. So their operating rate is closer to two cents a mile. Hopefully you found today's discussion with Jim regarding the Kona Hyundai EV electric vehicle ultimate uh, informative. Hopefully it helps push you in one direction or another regarding an electric vehicle and picking up the Kona. If you have any questions, do me a favor, drop it in the comments below and I'll get Jim to answer them as quickly as he can. If you came this far in the video, give it a like, hit that red subscribe button. 
as usual, thanks for watching. And don't say anything for the trip back.